Alabama's own Gary England. This time and a while back, there was a tornadic thunderstorm coming across Oklahoma City. I'll show you what happened. I'll tell you, there are no gentlemen that night. You know, just a quick check. The factors uh, continue to come together for the possibility of a severe weather outbreak in Oklahoma and points to our north. This was the morning of May 17, 1995. And I have to tell you, early on, it looked like it was going to be a bad tornado day. Now, one of the first things we do is notify news and implement our storm action plan. Running that card back down in this area. You get Randy Renner right in here. We may need to borrow a few more of your folks. How big, how big is it going to be? Well, it's hard to say. It could be a major outbreak or it just could be a bunch of thunderstorms with a few tornadoes. But uh, it's, this is a, uh, a pattern that sometimes produces large damage in tornadoes. Low, oh, look at the low, look at the low. Now, if it moves slowly, like they're saying, we'll be in reasonably good shape because they'll fire right along the... Uh, uh, the warm front. That's how it back up. There. Yeah. Wherever the jet, that main jet crosses the uh, warm front. Be another update. Uh, tornado watch continues for parts of northwestern Oklahoma and central sections. Uh, severe thunderstorm watch northeast. Let's take a look at it on Doppler 9000, a broad view. The severe activity is in northwestern Oklahoma. We're going uh, close on Storm Tracker. We still have a tornado warning for Woods County. That would be south of Alva, southern Woods County. If it still exists, be moving over toward Aline. But anywhere from Alva down to Winoka and east, moving into, uh, well, onto the east into Alfalfa County should stay alert to the possibility of severe weather, extremely severe weather. Severe weather. Stay at TV9. We'll keep you advised. Gary? Singagram for Gary! Singagram for Gary! love you, you fill our days with cheer. How we miss love you every day of the year. We watch your forecast nightly, our days they glow more brightly. Oh, spring is fine on Channel 9, now that winter's through. And now, Gary, here's your present, the spring rabbit. <laughs> This is a spring, spring is sprung. Spring is sprung, Gary. Yes. Back home, Twister continues to blow away all competition at the movie box office, and now a real-life hero has emerged from the story. I mean, how often does a TV weatherman in Oklahoma get to save the life of a Hollywood star? about killer tornadoes hits close to home for Gary England, a TV weatherman in Oklahoma. This is a priority one tornado warning, stand by. As a recognized authority on Twisters, England conferred with Bill Paxton on his role and says the movie is on target. Let me tell you, it's close enough that it'll cause you to jump right into the seat beside you with someone you don't know. In an extra twist of realism, England appears in the beginning of Twister as a weatherman who gives young Helen Hunt a life-saving warning. Well, I gave this to you earlier, but they extended over into Oklahoma County uh, to, uh, let's call it, they're calling all of Oklahoma County. Yeah, it's great being a hero, saving Helen Hunt's life back in 1969, but you know, she never did thank me properly. Like the characters in the film, this meteorologist doesn't get a thrill out of finding a funnel. Well, actually, I try to avoid tornadoes because I scream when I'm afraid and it frightens people that are around me. True story. And now that England appears in a huge box office hit, there is a whirlwind of attention from his co-workers. Sort of. Oh, yes, they're, a they're asking for Bill Paxton's autograph. You know, about three years ago I went skiing. I fell on every part of my body. But here I am skiing again, the ski king that I am. And uh, I might mention Colorado, New Mexico, skiing conditions are good, so if you're going skiing, it looks super for you. And I want to thank Mike Cody and the Chalet uh, Ski Center for putting me on this machine because I've learned a lot. It's incredible, and you're going to love skiing, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, our other Gary, Gary Horker, shows us more about the lighter side of Gary. Kelly, and you know, this weather center has been Gary England's exclusive forecasting realm for the last 30 years or so. Boy, if the walls behind here could talk, they might tell you a little story about uh, the, the changes over the years, like looking like a bad 70s rec room to the old gauges in the wall. Times have sure changed, but the one constant in three decades has been Gary, the man who's aged a little better than Dick Clark over the years, and the man who's created his own sense of low pressure with a sense of humor. In 30 years, generations have seen Gary England scrambling to save you from dangerous weather. 
his weather center can become such a pressure cooker, blowing off the steam with a little levity means keeping your sanity. To know Gary England off camera is to know the class clown who might drag you into laughter whether you want to laugh or not. Even interviewing him can be a challenge. The entire business, the entire business actually sucks. You know? <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary England. I'd like to welcome you as we take a look at Oklahoma. We, I just always loved having fun. And Gary seems to have the most fun when most of us would panic. The Western Canadian, or Eastern Canadian County, I screwed that up. Anyway, it's cold at uh, Bismarck and also... Like when equipment like his microphones break down, which seems to have happened a lot over the years. <laughs> Ponca City, uh, gee money, Christmas, what is that? This is not pre-planned entertainment. This is spontaneous screw-ups. Nope. I'm losing it. It is Friday night. Now, on nights when the weather is not severe, Gary lets his guard down, and things just tend to happen, like his famous roach forecast. At a normal afternoon. But something very abnormal was heading towards Gary's mouth. I knew there was something large on my face, and, and, it, and as I reached for him, he was running for my nose. Didn't they hand records for this? Can you imagine what would happen if he'd gone up my nose? You know, we got a bug spray for this place. <laughs> we called in the bug people, and they said, yeah, it's a Pennsylvania wood roast. That sucker was about that long. I've got your little pet here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, you can have him. And the one about the guy, you know, that was in the forest camping, and he went to the bathroom and decided later to burn the evidence. He ended up burning, burning the forest there. Now that story was supposed to segue smoothly into Gary's weather, but he'd already completely lost it, and he would not recover. Can you go? <laughs> Jennifer Reynolds had to take over. <laughs> okay, let's do the currents, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> Goes on. It's 85 degrees at 10:17 p.m. Look, you always had those times where you start to laugh and you cannot stop. Gary tried desperately to pull himself together. Because I usually will grab right up here, just trying to force that, force myself to keep from laughing. Uh, that's that's what we had today, on the uh, allergies. <laughs> Well, this was one of those nights when it just didn't work. Uh, it's all right. You just get to look at it. Warm, you thunderstorm. <laughs> I'm taking over now. If you southeast, start talking to the it. southeast. Tomorrow, I've got it. <laughs> and this second. Jennifer had to finish the forecast. Okay, shall we move along? Sorry about that. <laughs> Now, there are some who might think Gary's job is just not a laughing matter, but those are the people who have never met Gary. Yeah, right. I'm just a kid who never did grow up. <laughs> this is a great bring us from. Bring us from, uh, Gary! Yes. Happy holidays, and which reindeer dumped an ice sock? And in Oklahoma City, our temperature coming in at... Hello there. Talk to me, man. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you stay serious the entire time... Oh, oh. Told you, didn't I? <laughs> You'll know, never last in this business. But maybe the reason Gary's lasted so long in a business when so many others burn out is his ability to have fun and laugh at himself. Walk off. We didn't. Are we bothering you? Come on, come on, come sit down. Come back. Yeah. Sit, boy. <laughs> Even when he's the only one who knows what's so funny. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that then. <laughs> 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 right now, right now, <laughs> it's late, folks. Yeah, I think things were weird. <laughs> okay, yeah, I sure did. Pardon, pardon me, I can't stop laughing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> okay, so fun is never stop. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we do. We have a lot of fun out yeah, here. We do. We do. Fun yeah. stuff. <laughs> I got a little. Okay. Welcome back. No, gosh. I got a little present for Roach you. Roach spray. I've always needed it for so many years. <laughs> we expect you to use that every day, just all under your arms and whatever. Well, smells you're, good. Near your nose, of course. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate that very much. We appreciate you yeah, so much. Thank you very much. I about can't control myself now. <laughs> 10 p.m. in Oklahoma City. Let's take a look at it on this Friday night in the big town. The original Friday night in the big town. 34 degrees. Now, the freezing line presently runs Ponca City. Uh, gee, money. Christmas, what is that? Did you see that? Or is that me? I'm losing it. It is Friday night. You can tell that for sure. <laughs> <laughs>
As many of you know, we have Hollywood right here in Oklahoma. A new Steven Spielberg movie, Twister, is being filmed right here in the state. It's going to show the world what Twisters and Storm Chasers are all about. This is the base camp for the motion picture crew of Twister. Most anything they need is in one of these trailers except for severe weather information. That's where I was able to help because Warner Brothers wanted the crew to be prepared for Oklahoma's springtime weather. The film is set in Oklahoma and the frequency of storms here was just what they needed for that touch of realism. That and their spatial effects wizards. The day I was on location, the stars of Twister were being filmed in these somewhat magnificent storm chasing trucks. In the movie, they have uh, at least six vehicles used in storm chasing. This is just one of them. This one has uh, Dorothy 2 in it, and this is to be placed in front of a tornado. At least they're going to attempt to put it in front of a tornado. You'll find out whether they're successful or not. Uh, this vehicle also has monitors, uh, as we can look up there on the front. Uh, they see exactly what is going on where. You got the mounts for the cameras. Like I said, there's one of six vehicles used for the various scenes, and I think you're going to find them very exciting. In the movie, the competing chase teams will try to place Dorothy in front of a moving tornado. You may or may not want to tell me this, but uh, do some of the Dorothys get in the line of the tornado, actually hit by the tornado? Well, let me say the intent is that, uh, that that happened. You know, I've enjoyed getting to see a little of what it takes to make a film. In fact, recently the crew visited the TV9 Forecast Center and shot some severe weather warnings for the movie. Could this be my 15 minutes of fame, or will I end up on the cutting room floor? Whatever happens, it has been a wonderful opportunity to lend support to such a great film and great people. Hi, I'm TV9 Chief Meteorologist Gary England. In Oklahoma City, weather is our most important station image. In 1981, we were the first station in America to bring Doppler radar online to help us warn our viewers of severe weather. Now, through a fine engineering staff here at TV9, we have something I think you want to bring on board your station. We call it First Warning. We first brought it online in early 1991, and it has had high impact. It has been very successful. Here's the way the first component works. The National Weather Service sends out a warning. And when that warning comes out, this map appears instantly in the corner of your screen. Or, as this demonstration shows, the map may be placed in any corner of the screen. And of course, this comes in very handy when severe weather and sports programming occur at the same time. From that day. We're in here. Okay, we're like, uh, we're right, uh, we're right with it. Our spotters in the field report tornadoes very close to Billings. It's on the ground again. Oh, man, look at this. And uh, it's just the most incredible thing I've seen. And I don't know how long. Okay, uh, let's go to radar quickly. The tornado is still indicated, still being reported in northern Noble County. It's moving almost due east. It looks like, and a very little bit, uh, between the Marlin and Red Rock area. And this is really wound up again. Rapidly rising air. See that? There's a possible funnel. You go up here. You got it. Here it comes. There it is. Just to our northeast in Payne County, let's quickly go to radar. Tornado reported on the ground just west of you folks in Yale. So extreme eastern Payne County, stay alert to the possibility, not only the possibility, in fact, the tornado on the ground near the intersection of Highway 51 and 18 about three minutes ago. So tornado warning, eastern Payne County. Stay with TV9. We'll keep you advised. You know, during tornado emergencies, when we come on and issue a tornado warning and we give you the safety precautions, go to the center part of your house, lowest level, smallest room, you know, you need to follow those instructions. I'm standing in a house here in Edmond, Oklahoma, and this is the lowest level, the smallest room, the center part, and that's basically all that's left of this structure. And the people took shelter in here and most likely saved their lives. Gary England came over and said, hey, you know, get to shelter, get there now. And I just do not see how we would have survived had we not done what he said when he said to do it right then. I called Mr. England today and said, thank you for saving our lives. Uh, we just would not have made it without you. Hours before Gary takes the stage, about a dozen TV9 technicians and volunteers begin putting that stage together. It will take hundreds of pounds of equipment and what seems like miles of cable and banners. At the moment, you can, we can start getting together and just start decorating. Okay. It is a huge undertaking for the TV station and our hosts. 
in this case, the Moore School System. It's been an awesome responsibility. It's been a, I, I just cannot believe how much is involved. By early afternoon, the equipment is in place, and production director Chuck Bayless and audio tech Red Turnbull are fine-tuning. A couple hours later, the first of what will be a standing room only crowd arrives. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. We're two and a half hours before showtime, and the first person is already here. <laughs> Why are you here so early? Because I've heard great things about the terrible twisters, and I was told, get here early. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say you made it. By 7, those seats are filled. The wait is over. It's showtime. Tornado is now reported on the ground at 40, the 4600 block of West Edmond Road. 4600 block of West Edmond Road. So obviously you folks in Edmond that have not taken safety precautions should do at this time. Let's quickly check Doppler radar. As we go to radar, we point right up in here. And this particular area is where the tornado is. And this right in this area here would be the 4600 block of Edmond Road. Right here where my finger is, Alan. Right here. Okay, and that's moving up toward Edmond. The road, now that's Edmond Road right up in there, right down to your south here. That is Hefner Road. So you folks, and the right, once again, the danger should be north of Britain Road. Should be north of Britain Road and on into the Edmond area. Tornado precautions are as follows. Go to the lowest level of your home, the smallest room, center part, closet or bathroom. Take immediate cover in the Edmond area. Stay with TV9. We'll keep you advised. Half mile in diameter. Tornado warning. Go, go, quick. Priority one. Priority one. Priority one. 13 miles out. How long? So far, 13. Union City. Large tornado just west southwest of Union City, moving toward the Union City area. You should take immediate tornado precautions in the Union City, all surrounding towns out there. This is a very large tornado on the ground out there with a very large hook indicated on radar. If you do not have a cellar or a basement, you need to go to the center part of your house, the lowest level, the smallest room, the center part. Wrap in a blanket, get on the floor immediately. Hi, my name's Gary England, and I'm the chief meteorologist here at Channel 9 KWTV in Oklahoma City. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about our fantastic new weather maps we have here. The printing, all the color, all the printing, all the graphics that you'll see are printed subsurface. So in other words, they'll just last forever. Conditions are uh, pretty favorable for some explosive thunderstorm development. In fact, some that's going on right now. This main storm right now, just now developing very quickly. That's where it is. What is that, Val? There is that, Val. You see it. We see a huge, huge rotation close to the ground. Tornadoes on the ground. We've got a funnel on the ground right now, right inside. Tornado on the ground. Debris cloud, debris cloud. There it is. Multiple vortex tornado on the ground. Extremely dangerous. So you folks in the path of this tornado, get below ground. It's, uh, if, you, if, you, if you can't do that, if you, whoa, if you can't do that, get in the center part of your house, a closet or a bathroom, cover it with pillows and blankets. If you don't have that, get on the east or north wall, lots of pillows, lots of blankets. Get in the bathtub, get, put the kids in the bathtub, get in on top of the kids. It's an extremely deadly tornado. Directly behind the other one. Okay, we see it. We see the funnel. It's a smaller funnel. Yeah. It's a little bit to the left. It's right above the, yeah, right there. And that's, that's to the left of the major funnel. Right. Gee, money. Yes, Look right. at that. We have a large tornado on the right, large tornado on the right, and a smaller tornado on the left. Ranger 9, hold your shot, hold your shot. As you look at it, this tornado is moving through parts of Newcastle and southwest Oklahoma City. Go back to Ranger 9, go back to Ranger 9. We see a stovepipe tornado on the southern edge of it right now. Civil Defense calling in all staff of the metro area. This is a major. Jack, get us back on the air. We're up, we're up, we're up. Scott, talk to me. We have a large circulation, large tornado continues on the ground. Uh, large, large, long crack tornado continues. It is moving Dell City, Tinker, Draper Lake. Ah, boy, I'm going to leave this. He uh, said this if, if right not, on the television if it, station. If it's not there now, it'll be there within a, half, a minute or so. Val, are you saying it's over the television station? Get, get people out of this studio. Get them out of the studio. Everybody get shelter right now. Where is it? Where is it? It's over the station. It's here, guys. Come on. It's here. It's here. Where are we going? Come on. In here. This way. This way. This way. This way. Keep talking to us, Val. 
Keep going back. Okay, back. Good. 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 Yeah, as you can see right there, another large tornado, Gary, on the ground. Good. Yeah. Man, this one's really sucking me in, so I'm going to have to position right. to get away from it here. It looks like it's moving due east, too, Gary. Yeah, it looks like east about 10 miles an hour, and it's wrapped up. Uh, Valcaster is really close to it. Hank is just to the south of it. And of course, you're very close to it, too. Uh, this, I'm going to give you some locations for you folks that are tuning in. This thing is moving east very slowly, and that's a blessing that it's moving slowly. And it's about 4.6 miles. Looks like northwest, four and a half, that's about four and a half miles northwest of Marshall, Oklahoma. Marshall is in northern Logan County, and all of this is north of Oklahoma City. Man! When she comes, and it's rotating rapidly around the wall cloud. So if you guys watch oh, that, go. now you need to get your tail out of there. Yeah, it, it's not safe. Okay. We gotta go. This it's is uh, uh, the, the circulation is about 2.5 miles uh, northwest of Marshall. So there's another one uh, left there. Bound, is that bounce shot there? Check and, your screen. So if you look at that, uh, this is just a yep. I'm, I'm watching. Okay. 2.4 uh, 2 miles northwest of Marshall. So obviously, if you live in southeastern Garfield County, whoa. Right on the ground. And what what it is is it's a big area of ramping rain curtain, and right in the middle of those rapid rain curtains, every now and then you just oh, there it is. God. Holy All right, big yeah. one on the ground now, Gary. Big one. Yeah. Yes, they don't last long, but circulation stays there. Go down that way. We'll take a look at that storm. Uh, you guys in Logan County, not only just southwest Logan County, but all the way up to Cimarron City, over to Guthrie and south there, Taylor, because this thing it almost has a life of its own. It started, I think, hours ago and many, many miles ago, and has done a lot of damage and probably done, has done things worse than that. But it's uh, southwest Logan County, up towards Cimarron City, over to Guthrie, down to Seward. Now, if you folks in Oklahoma County, uh, we don't see any strong circulation except maybe a weak circulation in the northwest, far northwestern sections of Oklahoma County. But the man, that tornado is now in Logan County. And, and, and it is, well, take a look at it here. We just got a new update on this. And this will be on the velocity so we can go to Excel. And it's uh, it has a little triangle. That's a tornado vortex signature. Storm action seven. seven. Storm action seven. Rob's got the tornado. Storm action seven. There it is. This is uh, in the Chickasha area. Weather's Mike. Whoa. Carter, Enough it's, already. It's getting stronger. It's not very large, but if you can see the video, you can see it's a pretty strong circulation with it. Yeah, it cut me off. It come across the highway. It cut me. It developed very rapidly. You guys, uh, we've got you on the air. We have your video on the air. You all talk to us. You're the people seeing it. Uh, where is it in relationship to downtown Chickasha? From our vantage point, it looks like it would be very close to downtown Chickasha. Okay. What direction are you? Uh, what direction are we're, you? We're looking. We are looking due west on Highway 62. It's uh, not too far south of Highway 62 right now. It's going to cross it very, very soon. How far do you think that is? We so if 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 you're looking west, and that that has to be in the Chickasha area. Yeah, I. It, I mean, in yeah, Chickasha. I would say it, it might be on the east side of Chickasha. Okay. Uh, still, I mean, it's not a large tornado, like I said, but it, it's definitely a strong tornado. Yeah, Rob and Rob. Uh, uh, by the way, they, they they've gone through this. They've been small, then they've been multiple vortex, and they've been huge. Now this thing, uh, it's either getting larger or getting much closer to you two guys. By the way, this this is near Chickasha. Okay, we have crossed Highway 62 just now. Okay, cross Highway 62. So you talking about cross Highway 62 just to the east of Chickasha? Uh, or in Chickasha? Side of Chickasha, probably. I have not seen building debris too much in that anyway, but uh, we're going multiple vortex with it. It's, uh, you know, it looks like it's tearing things up. You can see the debris cloud there. So big hail spreading across Oklahoma City. So look, if you live in eastern Oklahoma, eastern Canadian County, or if you live in uh, Oklahoma County, you know, just expect huge hail. We're getting really, really large hail. Now on the, on the, uh, on the helicopter, Sky News 9's out there. We see somewhat of a rotation and a lowering in there. I don't know whether you can hear the hail at home, but a lot of you are. So huge hail in here, and guys, we're way, we're getting a hail, we're getting a, okay, this will be a tornado warning for, 
for Oklahoma and Canadian County. Tornado warning now. Of course, you heard it first from Val. Yeah, go ahead. I can't hear you, but go ahead and shout. Here is it. Yeah, go ahead. In the middle of this south storm, I'm in the hell corn. I'm at downtown. I'm in the Dallas Junction. It's not bigger, okay. Gary. Okay, appreciate that. Uh, this tornado, we look at XL, tornado warning on this storm here. Uh, it's right along right along West Britain Road. This is in Canadian County. But let me tell you, if you, if you live Banner Road, if you live east of Banner Road, east, east, goodness gracious, if you live east of Banner Road in Canadian County, and that's going to include Gregory Road and Cimarron Road, southeast of 25, oh, brother. Tornado continues to be indicated. And this is good. Val, and you guys, if you can jump in here, I can barely hear you, but go Gary, ahead. Go ahead, Gary, Val. If you can hear me right now, Gary, uh, this, uh, the circulation became completely rain wrapped. What did he say, Wes? Large and violent tornado crossing western right now. I'm at 134th. It's a half mile south of me. Gary, it's in between Portland and May, right on Southwest 149th. Okay. On Moar, you can see the debris ball. Okay. Southwest 149th, directly between Portland and May. Anybody who lives east Big and northeast ball. of that location, prepare for a violent tornado right now on the west side of Moore. That's a huge debris ball. That's houses and trees and Bob such. Mill, Sky News 9 HD. Okay, I believe that's Santa Fe right there. They got is a log jam. It's a log jam right there. Now this tornado is only about a quarter mile west of that road right there. Right now should go a little south of Dell City, but there's never any guarantees on this. Giant tornado continues. That's a, oh, look how big that is. Wow. Uh, get, you are getting video, aren't you? Yes. Okay. There's so, so many power lines around here, Val. I want you to be careful. Right. Please be careful okay. right here. Val, back up. I'm back it up. I'm back it up. Val, I'm back in power lines right okay. there. There's okay. houses. Oh, there's debris right there. Val, back up. Oh, I am going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Other reporting. All right. Storms uh, continuing to develop just west of Oklahoma City. Not really called storms yet. But uh, they're just uh, parts of Canadian County out to the west near Hinton. And let's take a look at some uh, shots from our storm tracker. First, we'll go to Val Castor and Val Storm Action. Val Storm Action 1. Val, what do you have? Uh, Smith Road, Jensen Road, Reuter Road, Reno Road, 15th Street Southwest. Some of the north south roads are Red Rock Road, Calumet Road, Courtney Road. And let's lay the mic and let's also lay some other. Uh, streets on here. Okay. So all along from uh, Union City, Union City up to South El Reno, Union City up to South El Reno, take your media tornado precautions and that below ground is best, get flat, safe, cellar, basement. If you have a, uh, a, a safe room, that's great. Uh, if you have a large building close to you and you have time to go, the steel reinforced concrete such, get in that. If you get trapped in your house, you get in the, the closet or bathroom in the middle part of the house. And you get down and you take cover, you wear a helmet, you wear shadow resistant goggles, long sleeve shirts, long pants, and shoes. This, go ahead, go ahead, Val. Multiple tornado. If you got our stream, Gary, it's, it's a mile and a half. Uh, it's going to be a big one. Uh, it's going to be the of us right now. This thing is southwest of El Reno. Uh, it looks like to me it's moving. It's going to affect probably south of I 40, about three miles right now. Right in front of us, large, multiple. Serious. This is a serious tornado. Jam shot. Large Golly, serious. both of them. We got two of them. We got it on. Now, guys, we got it on uh, Sky News 9. Bob Mills Sky News 9. Huge tornado mobile vortex. And also, we've got it on David Stream. Hank's got it. So, as we look at these videos, I'm going to tell you, we know the tornado's there. It's uh, long and south of Interstate 40. <laughs> Who, who's on? Now. What the whole circulation is about a mile and a half around, just right above the, the tornado. Boys, and it's not really moving that much. It's not moving that much. It's on the field. It's in the field, right in front of all that. You guys, Dave and Val, you're not in a good position. You guys listen to me. You're not in a good position. This thing is very, very close to you. You don't need to get that close. 
Uh, you're in the no, circ you're in the circulation. It's, I'm telling it's you. Not moving, though. We can, well, let me sanitary. tell you. You may think it's not moving, but it is moving. We can see it on radar. And okay. it's, it's it like the one we had the other day where it it's moving, then it looks a little like it moves a little north and it moves a little bit back to the south and the west. Uh, but it's right along this particular road. Now, you guys jump in if you have something important. We know there's a tornado. We got the location pretty well nailed down. So it's south of Interstate 40. That's right. We all know he grew up in Sealing, and when he was there, he was surrounded by Cheyenne people. During a recent interview with New York Times Magazine writer Sam Anderson, Gary said his one regret was he never asked the tribe about tornadoes. Well, this week, Gary had the chance when Cheyenne Chief Gordon Yellowman paid Gary a visit. Well, it always seemed like to me that you all are connected to nature, to space, to, to everything. It's actually um, empowerment within our Cheyenne way of life, uh, our Arapaho way of life. Yeah. So she gave us ways to communicate with her. And she told us, you know, when, whenever I'm approaching, uh, you must call me by my Cheyenne name. His name was uh, Hoawood Dust. And so Hoawood Dust was the tornado, the cyclone. Wow. And he, he said, I'm gonna always come in this direction. And he said, when I'm approaching, you come out there and talk to me in Cheyenne. If you will, Gordon, Chief. Mm -hmm. Chief, if you will, tell me about uh, the day and, and the tornado of May 31st this year, the what we call the El Reno tornado now. So when the siren went off, and then we, uh, I started to gather my things together, the things we use in our ritual. And when you talk to him, then he's going to go around you. He's going to have pity on you. And that's what happened that day. As soon as we start uh, finishing the ritual, then I told my family, sit down now, let's stay calm. We were taught to stay calm. As soon as we'd done that, then the tornado turned south, and then we were watching it, turned on the TV, watching it, and the, the meteorologist said, it's turning south, it's going south. Why, it's never done that. Well, we knew as Cheyenne people, to me as a leader, just like you, we have responsibilities. And our responsibility is to take care of our people. And that's what you're doing through this. And so I commend you for that. And I want, on behalf of the Cheyenne Rappo tribes, I want to say, ha ho, Piva, you did a good job. And so you're, you're, you're very much appreciated in our communities. Thank you. Ha nah, ho, appreciate it. Thank you. Amazing individual, you know. I, I, we, I believe, on the website we're going to put the full interview, which runs about 30 minutes or so. So, great stuff from the chief tonight. Clear and mild. Then we're going to have warm nights and hot days. Is that a surprise? You know, I've done about 30,000 of these shows, and I and I ask uh, Susan Gear, how, how many ways can you say hot? Anybody got any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> then maybe a little bit cooler uh, Sunday Monday time frame. A slight chance of rain with it. And for the allergies, a lot of us are having problems with this stuff, and we continue with the pollen and the, well, the grass and weed pollen in the high category. Everything else is good. The uh, low this morning, uh, close to normal, at a 70. The high this afternoon, 94, a little hotter than normal. We've been up to 106. That's not showing up right now. There's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, and it helps keep you a little bit cooler, even though it doesn't feel like it. Wow. Is that me? Anybody else see that? <laughs> Okay, the 83, heat index 87, so that's how hot it feels out right now due to a rather high dew point coming in at 70. And across the state, what do you say? It's 70s and it's 80s, not a lot of wind, and really it's cooled off nicely. You just need a little bit of a breeze. Storm system roll by right now. We're going to be under the influence of high pressure area and a little low pressure area in the vicinity too. Uh, but overall, it looks like we just continue hot. No surprise there. Lows, 70s uh, late tonight and tomorrow morning. And for the highs tomorrow, we will go some 90s. We'll go 94 at Miami. That's a, kind of the North Pole of Oklahoma, it seems like, in recent years. And some 100s down in southwestern Oklahoma. In the sun, you know, you can add about 20 degrees for the effect on your, your, uh, your, your skin. Noon time tomorrow, 91. So rather hot at that time. 98 at 5 p.m. and south 10 to 15. And let me tell you what. Please understand, I know it's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Isn't it? I know it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday on the calendar. Wednesday on the calendar. But what I'm going to do is going to give you and give me one more Friday night in the big town, baby. Jump back. Throw me down. <laughs> 
Good. Jump back. Throw me down, Loretta. And those of you who have watched a long time or even just a short time, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And I'm going to slip back up here again. <laughs> well, bite yourself on the back of the leg, right? Yeah, buddy? well, I didn't add that in there, did I? <laughs> Roughly 30,000 forecasts, and you still got it, Gary. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, still doing the same routine. <laughs> <laughs> it's worked. I mean, you know, stick yeah. with it. Yeah. Gary, I've been asked 1,500 times who Loretta is. <laughs> That's a great That's question. That's a very personal question. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. Okay. I tried. Yeah, you're probably in trouble now. <laughs> you know, earlier on, you had a very special hello from, what was it, OSU coach That's Gundy? That's right. Yeah. Earlier on. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, we were in Norman on Monday. Bob mm -hmm. Stoop just pulled us aside. He said, I want to talk about Gary. No, we chatted just a little bit. And uh, the folks down in Norman have appreciated you for a long time when it comes to reliable weather and had a chance to talk to the coach and this is what he had to say. I'd like to say congratulations to Gary for his 43 years here in the Sooner State. We appreciate your commitment. You're always reliable weather forecasts. You're a champion just like the Sooners. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. he is, uh, yeah, he has felt that way and I, I know personally, Gary, you've been a great friend. You have uh, been a guy with no pretense and believable and calm under pressure. I love the fact that you have been calm under pressure. Yes, he has been. Yeah, it's a process. He <laughs> grew into that, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We had a great, we've had a great day around here. It's been an emotional day. It sure has. Earlier on, in fact, Gary got a very special proclamation. We have some video okay. of it. Yeah, he got a proclamation from the state of Oklahoma for just being a pioneer in weather technology. And that's your representative, and he said you pushed him in a stroller when he was little. Sure, he used to live up the street from him. You know, and his brother didn't one after the other, brother bring him down the street, and I'd grab the roller and push him down the street. And he survived <laughs> and to he give you a proclamation. That's fantastic. Piece. Now he's running the, running the state. Well, so many people around here just wanted to say thank you for making this such a fun work environment. And I think that's what I personally love so much about you, Gary, is that you've just made work <clears throat> a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it is fun. If you have the right people in the right places, it's just a lot of fun, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's been a good time. It's been a long road, but it's been a good road. You know? It has. And people love you too, Gary. Well, just talk yeah, for just a second about what's you. coming up next. Yes. Uh, <laughs> me tonight? <laughs> no, no, not tonight. I mean, <laughs> in your career here. Because you're well, not leaving us. Well, you know, you know, I'll start at my office here and I'll be doing uh, some reports on air. Now, I won't be doing severe weather or red weather cast, but I will be doing some uh, reports. And it's going to be titled. Uh, but I'll keep you advised. Okay. That's uh, some things like that, and we'll be, we'll be looking a lot at the future, the long-range forecasting, things that people don't normally look at that are important to so many folks. So we'll have a good time with that, and a lot of other things. Yeah. Some of them are pretty wild ideas. Well, Gary, there's a lot that I want to say to you, but I'm afraid I will get choked up if I say too much. Uh, I just want to say what a, what a great friend you've been. We've been doing this together out here on this show for 18 years. And, yeah. and I've looked up to you. You've been a role model and a mentor for me. And, you know, I will, I will say this. Ever since I started working here, Gary was the first guy in every day. First guy in and one of the last to leave. Yeah. So I appreciate you putting that out there and, and, and being a role model for all of us. I appreciate in that. that. And it, we've had a great ride. It's been so it's much been fun. And it's been it's a lot been, of hard work. Been, it's, but it's been good. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. One thing I'd like to say, you've been here 18 years. I guess about, oh God, we had the tape, about 17 years ago on a spring day or yeah. whatever it was. You know, Kelly's pretty good size, six, two, three, four, something yeah, I've ever seen. Four. A big dude. He's, <laughs> he's up in Buffalo, Oklahoma, near, near the end of the world, almost in Kansas, <laughs> and he's chasing storms, but he didn't have a regular raincoat. He had on like a teenager's yellow, <laughs> uh, ladies' yellow thing. And I just had that little. Yeah, that little, his face is sticking out, and it came down to just below his waist. And I remember no thinking, who is that? <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> Look, he's a huge guy in a tiny raincoat. Who and, needs a picture yeah, when but, you have a description like that? Uh, no, there's there's only a few times time. I've seen you speechless. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what, what have we hired there? Yeah. It was a great sight. It was. <laughs> But it's been great working with you guys and yeah. all the people in the past, too. And there's been a lot of people moved through, a lot of great folks that, uh, that uh, have gone on to other markets and such, you know. And I, I think back Patty Suarez and, mm -hmm. and many other ones. It, just uh, great times, uh, great, uh, it was just great times. Yeah. Did some great shows. Did some really shows that weren't very good sometimes, you know. <laughs> sometimes they really but bad. But turned out to be the we, best. We try to be good. We try to be good. You get off there, here you go. Yeah, I just can't believe I just did that, you know. 
Hey, G Gary, if you're if you're talking to, to young people out there who yeah. want to get in the business, and yeah. you were mentoring. What what would you say is the one or two things that have been most important to you during your unbelievable career? Well, I think you know when you when you go into anything, whatever it is. But I'd recommend they go into sports. weather. But they, uh, I, you know, it's you got to have dedication to your job. You have to have really for me. I had to have tunnel vision. You have to have total focus in what you're doing. You have to believe what you're doing is right. You, have to, you know, you got to bust your hiney. So that's what I tell them. You, you, when we have interns come in here, I said, expect to work your tail off because yeah. that's what's going to happen. That's what happens in the real world. And so it, it's focus. It's, uh, like I said, that tunnel vision and, uh, and having, having gold. You know, Jerry Dalrymple's a guy who worked here for many years. And, yeah. and to, his, to his credit, he did, the, the, deserves a lot of the credit for the success of this station, also in the weather department. And uh, he was a guy who would say, why, why, why don't we try this? And, and we'd take it and run with it. And we always said, you know, we always said, how can we do this better? Like, you know, the storm projection six system you see around the country, it tells the time of arrival, you know. Well, we put that together right here in Oklahoma, the first one ever in history. And it, 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 was just, it was just amazing. We took that and moved it. And, and that's the way we used to measure. There was a, you take an old pen, a regular old pencil, number two lead, yeah. is that what they call it? Yeah. And that was 30 miles on the radar. So what we did all through those years and all those things you've seen was say, how do we do this better? Yeah. It wasn't like, let's go do something wonderful <laughs> today. It was, let's, 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 how can we do this better? Because we're always trying to improve. You probably saw that big board that had wheels on it. Oh, yeah. That was called the big board. And I made that. I didn't make the frame, but I made the map, and it was nine U.S. Coast Geodetic Survey maps that I cut out, glued together. <laughs> we put on that thing. It was great. Though. You yeah. see the highways and all yeah. that stuff. We were way ahead of our time. Wasn't a computer, but you could see yeah. it. And but when it got bad, Jerry Danrup would say, Get the big board. Yeah. <laughs> Get the big board. <laughs> and look you, how far you've, you've yeah. come and yeah. you've helped create yeah. what we have today. And, and, and it's good. To, you know, it's good. Good feeling. It's been a good time. And I'm just happy to have a job so long. Yeah, we're happy you did, too. My daddy would not believe it. <laughs> that for sure. You helped our job security. <laughs> I've yeah. had so many people post on my Facebook page of their favorite Garyisms. Of course, it. Friday Night in the Big Town was yeah. the number one. But so many posted on there about how you save their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, countless people yeah. on there who've said that. And, and I know that means a lot to you. Yeah, it does. It does. At the time when you're going through it, uh, well, in the early days, you didn't think. You didn't. You knew it was happening. You knew what was going on. Nowadays, you know. You know when there's going to be fatalities. Yeah. Like you know, you guys experienced the other day. Yeah. So you know that's you know what's happening. The equipment's so much better now. We know well in advance uh, when there's going to be storms. Usually, weather is always usually. Yeah. Uh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's, one of the things you're good at, right? Yeah. Because man, you never know for sure. If we talk about it, everybody talks about it. weather is so powerful and the equipment's so great and the people jump tall buildings. Well, you know, uh, we still, you know, a tornado can land in your front yard and you'd be the first one who knows about it. That's how, how we know a lot, but we're not there yet. And really, with severe weather, you have to take some responsibility on yourself and keep it safe. Mm -hmm. We can give you the information and you have to know what to do with it and, and make the proper decisions. And yeah. uh, so we've come a long way. There's yeah. a long way to go. Gary, I'm glad you're, you're still going to yeah. be here, too, to help with that yeah. weather technology development I'll be right as well. Yeah. Cup of coffee in my hand. Absolutely. <laughs> you brought us so far, and Oklahomans are the most weather savvy yeah. people in the world, and it's mainly yeah. because of you, Gary England. I appreciate that. You know, I'm going to be doing a lot of talks, a lot of speeches around and representing Channel 9, so it's a, it's a great opportunity for me. Yeah. Well, well we love you yeah. so much. Thank you. Yeah. Love you, Gary. Proud to have worked with you, buddy. You want to be sure to watch October 26th at 8 p.m. as we air our special Gary England After the Storms Have Passed. And we leave you tonight with a look back at Gary's legacy and some of the most memorable moments here at News 9. Hi, my name's Gary England, and I'm the chief meteorologist here at Channel 9 KWTV in Oklahoma City. There's a very large tornado on the ground after a very large hook indicated on radar. Well, let's go to radar and we'll give you this update. How far east of Enid are you at the present time? I still see, I see somebody driving down Interstate 44 to the north. Yeah, there is. I if you're driving, uh, but if you're driving anywhere between Chickasha and Oklahoma City on I-44, get off of that sucker now. This thing is in more and more. It's just south of the Oklahoma City area. Big time power line flashes. This is a critical situation. Very dangerous. We expect thunderstorms to start developing just to the west of Oklahoma City. The El Reno area continues your tornado precautions. Let me talk to you and your kids are home alone. You know, get in the center. If you have a cellar or a safe room, that's where you go. 
If not, you get in a bathroom or a closet in the middle part of your house, put a helmet on, football helmet, anything. Stay alert. Stay with TV9. We'll keep you advised. Stay with here. We'll keep you advised. Stay with TV9. We'll keep you advised. Stay with here. News 9. We'll keep you advised. Jump back. Turn around. Roll me down. It's Friday night in this big old town. 10 p.m. in Oklahoma City. Let's take a look at it on this Friday night in the big town. The original Friday night in the big town. It is Friday night. Friday night in the big town. Fri on this fr I can't get it out. Fr it's Friday night. Jump back, throw me down already. It's Friday night in the big town. <laughs> Here in Oklahoma, we've been through a lot. Together, we've seen the best of times for sure, <laughs> as well as the worst. There's a huge tornado producing multiple vortex tornadoes. That means several tornadoes. And this thing is going to be an animal. Thank you. 41 unforgettable years. You know, as I move into a new role here at News 9, I know you're in good hands. The team I built and trained is not only the best in Oklahoma, they're best in the business. And they'll be here to keep you safe no matter what. So stay with News 9. We'll keep you advised.